Oh no, YouTube rewarded me for uploading. Guess I'll make more content, which inevitably will get about 1% of the views I got on my guide video. Big Tech now controls my dopamine levels. Yay! <laughs> Alright, let's do some cooking in Core Island. The cooking mechanics aren't as simple as you get a kitchen and then you cook, like in a lot of other similar games. And I consider cooking to be an endgame feature in the current early access version. Mostly because you need to sink in some time and money before you can get properly started. If you're already familiar with the cooking mechanisms, great. I made separate chapters so you can check out the selection of dishes I think are best to make. I will also link the wiki page with all discovered recipes so far. Just note that there are dishes on that list you currently cannot cook because certain ingredients aren't in the game yet. With that out of the way, let's dive in. To even get to the point you can start cooking, you have to be a bit further along the game already. Your house needs to be upgraded first to get the kitchen upgrade. This requires 5000 gold, 100 wood, 50 stone and 5 bronze and silver bars. This means you must have at least finished the earth gate and can now access the water mine to get silver ore. You also need to have made some decent enough money to get up to 5000 gold. Once your house is upgraded, you're only halfway there. You got a kitchen with nothing in it. This is where the store, socket and pan, comes in. You may have noticed that every Tuesdays there's a program on your TV called Coral Shopping. It announces that a new item is available for purchase. All of these are cooking related. This stock rotates every week and has 9 different utensils. This means you'll take at minimum 9 weeks to get every utensil in the game. That's at least 2 seasons of gameplay. The utensils are pretty expensive as well, costing somewhere between 2000 to 4000 gold. It's best to start collecting them as soon as you got the money for it. But if you have to pick and choose because you don't have enough money yet, go for the grill. You'll understand why by the end of this video. Other good contenders are the blender and chef's knife. Now I hear you think, this embodied voice behind the channel Hard for Pixels. Sam, you spend a significant portion of your last video hyping up the food Jammu, which pronunciation you have butchered completely, by the way. To which I say, yes, I apologize for my atrocious pronunciation of your local herbal drink, kind Indonesian condors. I did look up videos to get the pronunciation right for that video, but I already am at a disadvantage because Dutch is actually my native language. So maybe you can get some comfort in the fact my accent ruins English as well. I have once again turned to this nice Balinese lady to replicate her pronunciation because I want to try and get it right. I'm sure I'll fail in this video regardless and I apologize in advance. Also apologies that my country occupied yours for 300 years. Okay, moving on. While Jammu is still the best consumable in the game, it is not something you can easily reproduce yourself, as the drink requires honey, rice and ginger. Ginger is the hardest ingredient as it is only found in the mines occasionally. It's actually easier to buy it from the fizz and sips, but that gets expensive pretty quickly. If you still want to try and make the drink yourself, follow these steps. Produce some honey from a cheap flour. A selling price beneath 30 gold is a good rule of thumb. You get ginger from the mines and you can get rice from the fall season. Put it all together and use the blender to mix it together and voila, you have created a homemade jamu. Do I recommend this method? No. Apart from the fact that you can't reliably find enough ginger to keep this going, rice is so much better used by turning it into sake. A normal sake will sell for 330 gold and a gold star even goes up to 500 gold. Keep in mind that dishes don't have any quality like other artisan goods, so it is vital that you use the lowest quality ingredients. This makes cooking a great way to get rid of your cheaper produce. For the dishes I'm about to recommend, I looked at four factors. How easily it is mass produced, how cheap it is to make, if it gives you a decent health and energy boost, and how accessible it is to make in every season. Yes, you could make the incredibly fun yet complicated dishes already available, like the fish sandwich, requiring a bread, a fish, lettuce and shallow. Or you could just sell the bread, grill the fish, cut up the lettuce and sell the shallow and boom, it's much more profitable than your super complicated dish. Or you could make the local dish lode, that requires eggplants from fall and spring coconuts. 
essentially requiring two different seasons and two separate utensils to make. Or you could go for the dumb and easy route, like I do. Not to mention that in this current state of the game, it does not save the dishes you discovered by yourself. It only saves the one you unlock from NPCs. In my opinion, it's not even worth trying to try out all recipes right now. It could be fun once we get some more updates, but for now, let's stick to quick and easy. That's why for this list, I have eliminated everything with three or more ingredients. It either takes too much time or is too complicated to get all ingredients together. We want simple dishes that we can remember from the top of our heads. There are plenty of two and one ingredient dishes that are better than those complicated dishes to begin with. If you want, it can even be a great additional way to make some money. But first and foremost, I looked at dishes you can craft yourself and take into the mines or ocean for deep dives. Out of the two ingredient dishes, I selected the following three options. First up is sashimi. This dish is not accessible for all seasons, but is incredibly low effort, only requiring a fish, any fish, and wasabi. Wasabi can be found around the island during spring. The utensil you need is a chef's knife, and the dish sells for 270 gold each. It gives a pretty good chunk of energy and health. It is not as easily mass produced, but you can probably get a solid 10 dishes out of it by the end of the season. Next is another seasonal dish, sushi. Sushi is also made with the chef's knife and uses any fish and rice, which you can harvest in fall. Money-wise, making sushi is a terrible decision because you should always turn your rice and sake if you want to get the biggest profit. However, this dish gives a whopping 370 health. Currently the highest amount of health given by any dish in the game. If you're worried you might pass out in the mines, this dish is for you. It will quickly get your health up before monsters can make you faint. You probably shouldn't spam this because the base price of sake is better than that of sushi, but since it's so easily craftable and gives that massive boost in health, it still deserves a spot in this video. Last up is the best on the two ingredient list. Fish tacos. Fish tacos can be made from any fish and a tortilla. Now the tortilla is an additional step. It's actually another dish that consists of any flour. Currently the only flour available you have to buy at Sam's. The reason why it's still the best on the two ingredient list is because it is available in all seasons and for the tortilla you use a skillet. The same utensil you use for the fish taco. This means you don't need an additional utensil to craft this dish. It gives you 238 health and 333 energy and sells for a nice 320 gold. So while this one takes a bit more to prep, it's still a very solid dish that gives you a really nice chunk of both health and energy, making this dish worth your while. That's it for the two ingredient dishes. I hope this goes without saying, but don't use your high-end fish for these dishes. A decent rule of thumb I use is to not use any fish for your dishes above 50 gold sell price. Also be aware that the cooking mechanic is still a bit clunky right now. It has a tendency to keep a utensil selected, even if you've exited the menu. Then if you come back to cook your next dish, it suddenly has two utensils selected. And you get a filled dish, wasting your ingredients. My tip is when you're done cooking to deselect your utensils. Once I started doing this, I never ended up accidentally making a filled dish. Especially when you're making a dish with rare resources, be extra careful with the utensils you've selected. And now for the truly ridiculous and stupidly broken dishes. These dishes only need a single ingredient and still give at least 100 energy and health. And all you need is a single vegetable. And out of that single vegetable, you can make four different dishes. So, do you have a blender, or a chef's knife, or a ceramic bowl, or an oven? Congratulations, you have now hacked the game. The blender produces a green smoothie, the chef's knife a vegetable salad, the ceramic bowl some puree, and the oven a vegetable jerky. The stats are ridiculously similar, only slightly favoring the fresh salad. If you truly want to take advantage of this, you should only use vegetables that don't sell for much and come from a crop that keeps producing the vegetable throughout the season. For spring, the crop I recommend is the sugarcane. 
For summer, the best one is corn, and for fall, those crops are either cranberries or beets. If these three seasons haven't given you enough vegetables to bridge over winter, you can also use the tea leaves from winter if you have a rank sea already. Though keep in mind that an osmium quality green tea gives better stats than any of the four dishes. There's also a single fruit dish, the smoothie. It is prepared with a blender and has the exact same stance as the green smoothie, though it sells for slightly more gold. There's also an option to turn the spring crop potato into a stew using a pot. This one gives more health and energy, but does use a pot. If you don't like completely reorganizing your farm to only harvest cheap produce you then have to cook, don't worry, it only gets stupider from here on out. Now for the two ingredient dishes I selected, it always used at least one fish. But did you know you can also just use the fish on its own? All you need is a grill and the fish. That's it. You now got yourself a grilled fish, giving you 240 health and 170 energy. Like I said, stupid. If you want to be all fancy about it, you can also add a single wood and cook a smoked fish, giving you 50 more energy than the grilled fish. And before you go all smug in the comments that this is technically a two ingredient dish, come on, a single wood? You cut one tree down and you get 20 of those things. This isn't an ingredient, this is meaningless fodder. If you hate fishing, then I still have one more ace up my sleeve. This is truly the king of easy dishes. This is everything I was looking for. You will need a grill and get ready for this, a single insect to craft bug jerky. Does it require a specific kind of insect? Nope, that's what makes this such a fantastic dish. It even gives you 156 health and 180 energy. And it sells for, I'm not making this up, 235 gold. The reason I find this so dumb is because there are plenty of super easy insects to catch around the island that don't sell for more than 20 gold. But if you turn it into a bug jerky, you get around 11 times your money's worth. Nothing is funnier to me than the image of swatting a normal sized fly, putting that on a massive grill, blasting that mofo to a crisp, and then turn around and say, here you go, that's 235 gold, please. That's so dumb, I love it. And while this is a great and quick way to make some dishes for your deep dives, if you play your cards right, you can make a good chunk of money from this too. I spend the late afternoon and the rest of the evening fishing and catching some bugs and turn my lowest selling bugs and fish into dishes. And I ended up making 2890 gold from that alone. The only downside is that it'll take 10 energy each dish and you do have to be willing to cook each individual insect one by one. But I personally don't care. When you are in the menu, it freezes your game time, so you don't lose any of your day's progression. Personally, I don't think it's too overpowered that the developers will code this out of the game, but that's not my call to make in the end. So we'll have to see if this method is still usable after early access. If you do use those dishes for your deep dives, I have one final tip I can give you. Get yourself an egg. Any egg. Preferably your worst one. Use either a pot or a skillet to make yourself a hard-boiled egg or a sunny side up. Money and stats wise, this dish is a dump. But it does give you a plus 100 max energy for the rest of the day. So if you're planning a deep dive into either the mines or ocean and expect a lot of energy to waste, make sure to consume either one of these two dishes at the start of your day. This way you can get even more out of your energy consuming deep dives. Do they stack? No they do not. I already tried, you are welcome. And that is everything I currently know about cooking easy dishes in Coral Island that will hopefully help you further along your own gameplay. Hope you're having a wonderful rest of your day and goodbye.